it going guys winter kills here and welcome to the first ever replays and highlights videos of 2020 so i've got a lot of really cool replays to show you guys here first we're going to take a look at some of our user submitted replays from some of my twitch subscribers again if you are subscribed to me on twitch and you are in the discord and you have your twitch connected with your discord and all that stuff you'll have access to the sub chat and the replay submission channel which allows you to submit your ygo replays to have a chance to be featured on this uh, show this series whatever you want to call it so uh, links to my twitch and discord down below if you want to support and also have a chance uh, to be featured and you should also just check out the twitch stream if you haven't or also join the discord as well got a lot of great people in there um, so we're gonna take a look at two of these replays first three replays actually here from uh, twitch subs uh, first one here is going to be uh, this one right here the comboing versus four interruption so this is a rather interesting Cyber Dragon build he is playing, and he looks like he's also playing against uh, 60 card Pendulum Guard Dragon, which I believe what it turns out to be. Uh, so going through the Electromite using Servant here, uh, and then blowing up the Donuts to be able to get an additional draw, and then Pendulum summoning out uh, for 4 here, using the Harmonizing to summon out the Black Fang Magician, linking off into the Elpy. Going into Triple Burst, summoning out Destruto to be able to go into the Absolute Zero and also get the Vortex Dragon on top of it. Who really needs Agar Pain, am I right? And then Synchroing into the Dawn Dragster. So, as you can see here, he does have the four interruptions. Will he be able to play through it? The answer is yes, because Mega Fleet is a good card. Clearing both the Jackal and that Her Heavenly Spears in no time. And then being able to go into the Chimera Attack, be able to clear the Dawn Dragster on top of that. Fortunately, the rev system will get negated, but he's going to go right up into this absolutely insane Mecha Phantom Beast Link Aurora Down, which I wouldn't be surprised if this card does get banned at the future. It's just absolutely bonkers. Look at what it's going to allow him to do. Go up into Ib, also get the effect of the O-Lion to be able to summon a level 3 token, to be able to sink into the Savage Dragon, which will equip the Needle Fiber for two counters for negates, and that succession is going to be able to bring back that uh, Infinity, or the, uh, the, the Soldier, to help go into infinity and then he's gonna suck up that hers and uh, at this point his opponent does have a few plays to make he's gonna try to go ahead and summon out the jackal via the effect of magister but the world chalice says otherwise he can send that card to the graveyard if it chooses to we'll try to negate with jackal and savage dragon we'll say otherwise so now he's gonna go into the battle phase and to clear the aurora dot and pass it back over to eros uh, who gets really uh, a decent draw there in the Nasher, which can be helpful to reborn things. But it's just a huge negation chain going on here, uh, and eventually he wins out there in the end after taking uh, that uh, Jackal with the Infinity. Infinity is such an amazing card. It steals a card, and it also offers negations. It's really, really incredible. Um, and uh, yeah, not much else he can do there. So taking the win uh, and breaking a very, very absurd board nonetheless uh now this next one is from the same uh twitch sub mr eros uh playing a rather interesting build of ignites and it is an extra link um using goki's ignites the sublime knight x paladin and the toon knight which gets him very quickly into isold also using a bit of dark warrior in here as well which you'll see summoning out the octo stretch linking into the master of the tenyi uh, which is crucial to this combo because it does give you three down arrows which helps you uh like to pendulum summon a lot from your extra deck because it gives you those three down arrows of course you still need those in master rule five if you're playing pendulum so it gets out the binary sorceress and then summons out the astrograph and that other level six ignite the gallant i believe to be able to make beatrice beatrice is dumping mally uh, going into the Trigate and then using this Goki rematch to Reborn for two, go into the Link Rebo and use that last Mally to be able to go into Phoenix. Um, so, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Extra Links aren't that great in Master Rule 5, but I still think it's pretty crazy that this is pulled off just using Gokis, Ignites, and Mally, which is just so, it's just such a, a weird concoction. He's going to be playing against AI. AI is going to normal summon the Achichi. He's going to try to play the AI Love Fusion, and that's going to get negated by the Trigate. Uses the Idol Reborn, and summons out the Picari, and he just goes ahead and scoops there. So a pretty swift win uh, by his part. And then this next replay I want to show you guys is Mech Knights. Of course, uh, would it be a top replays and highlights video without Larry having a replay to show off? And this time it's going to be Mech Knights against True Draco. 
And this man opens up Border, Demise, Duality, and Diagram. He's got the Triple Ds, the Diagram, the Demise, the Duality. Must be nice. Has to ditch the Majesty Maiden off the Demise, but could be worse. Uh, it does have two copies of Judgments to help back things up. And uh, the Avram will be able to clear that Border, which could be a huge problem later on if he could not clear it. He draws another Judgment for turn, and... That Dynamite Knight will just have to swing in for some damage. He's going to try to go through the Draco Net to try to go for that nice Ib combo you can do with Pure Mac. And that will get Matt with the Judgment. He draws the Disciples for turn, which is pretty nice because that'll be able to draw him into a There Can Be Only One. Blow up the Disciples to search Heritage, which can net him another draw. The Dynamite Knight will be Ash as it tries to respond to this World Legacy memory. It'll bring out the Purple Nightfall. He's going to go ahead and play Heritage. In response, he's going to use Purple's effect to go ahead and search Blue. Draws an additional card and draws into Ignis, which is pretty good, and then be, is able to clear that set Super Poly, which probably isn't too useful in this match. Uh, and then sets that there can be only one. Now, Purple comes back in the standby phase, and he's going to immediately chain the effect of Purple there, and also going to chain the effect of Dynamite Knight to get out that Apocalypse. The Yellow tries to go through, and he goes ahead and uses the Judgment on that. That leaves plenty of room just for the Draco Net to go through into Blue, and then goes into the Morning Star, is able to ditch the Indigo for the uh, you know, the secrets. Goes into the Spectrum Supreme and tries to swing directly. He has the attack of it, but it just does not matter because his life points are so low after resolving three judgments that game and still able to take the victory nonetheless. So now I want to move into some Master Rule 5 replays here. Uh, we'll start with DDD, move into some Photon Galaxy. And then I've got some very cool BA replays to show you guys. This DDD replay is featuring a bit of an older build that I was testing a few weeks ago. And the testing has been pretty rough going because I'm still very rusty with this deck. I haven't played it in quite some time. Uh, I really haven't touched the deck since the beginning of 2019. So it's been about a year since I've played DDD regularly. And still trying to work out a build for the new Master Rules because that's when I'll start playing it seriously. Um, or try to give it more attention. Um... But as you can see here, I'm going to the Electromite because Electromite is still a pretty decent card in DDD, however you want to look at it. And then going into the Genghis and then into the High Gust King Alexander. Uh, and then using the effect of the Meteor Burst to bring out the Ragnarok and continuing to combo here. And uh, going up into Siegfried and Titanic Galaxy. I could have made an Appaloosa here as well. Uh, it just completely slipped my mind. I don't even know if it was in my extra deck at this point. Uh, which it was not. So, again, that's just something that could be in the extra deck to follow up. So, giving you three monster gates and two spell negates, which is pretty solid. Um, but he is playing True Draco Thunder Dragon, uh, which is a weird, weird choice. Ends up drawing into an Aloof Lupine and a duo. Ends up clearing most of the field, and to be granted, uh, like that, that field could have been a lot better. Uh, like I said, I could have made the Appaloosa if I was playing it. I probably also could have found a way to make a Crystal Wing some way in there if I had, didn't mess up the combo sequencing, which is very easy to do with DDD if you've never played the deck. I'm going to get started here with trying to activate the Swirl Slime. He's going to chain the Apocalypse. I'm going to have the Siegfried Negate um, so I can try to push for some damage here and uh, so I can get over his monsters. And I, I do this order of Fusion Summoning out. I, I do it out of order. Should have made the big Genghis first and then made the D-Arc and then D-Arc would have been able to revive uh, another card from my graveyard. Um, or the Genghis would have been able to revive and now he's going to go ahead and use the Apocalypse effect uh, since I cannot negate um, at this point. And he's going to be able to have everything which is going to make it super easy for him to get over stuff. Goes ahead and brings out the Thunder Dragon Hawk. Uses the Tribute Summon effect there and then he goes ahead and uses the Thunder Dragon Fusion for Titan. But decides to link that off for some Summer Summoner, which is an interesting choice. Uh, and then Diagram Shenanigans here and using Heritage uh, to draw into two. Draws into Return and another uh, copy of Thunder Dragon Dark. And ends up just clearing the entire field uh, at this point. But I still have a Dark Contract with enough life points to use. So I'm definitely happy about that. It's going to go ahead and... Not, I'm not even going to use its effect, rather. I'm just going to go ahead and use Swirl and bring out... Uh, the Ragnarok, and Ragnarok will bring out the Executive Genghis. We go right into Kali Yuga, and that card will be able to seal the deal completely, uh, be able to negate everything, and just run over his uh, Some Summer Summoner uh, for game, which would have been for 19, which would have been game exactly. So, yeah, that's going to do for that replay. It's the only DDD replay I have right now, but hopefully I'll be getting more to show you guys in future videos. This next one here is uh, Photon. So I'm playing against that Ignite, crazy Ignite uh, extra link deck that I showed you guys in a previous replay. But this is playing against me, 
playing photons in the new master rule setting and i'm going to show you guys just how busted afterglow dragon is when combined with the tachyon dragon uh those two cards are absolutely insane and he's gonna go ahead and do the whole combo here going for a pendulum summon uh, and taking advantage of all those arrows there that the master of the tenny is giving goes into electromite uh, and searches this card and he's taking advantage of the new noble knight to be able to get a special summon while you control a fire warrior monster and it gets treated as a tuner uh, and then going into that beatrice sending the mali a key part of that combo then going into the phoenix using that goki rematch there to revive two gokis of course the uh the suplex and the octo stretch and then that last mally helping to complete the extra link so i get started with the pot of desires draw into a orbital and an expedition i believe and then using the brave here to get started and then using the soldier uh trying to bait out this trigate first is essentially what i need to do using expedition to bring out the afterglow dragon go into the tachyon dragon now detaching the afterglow to bring out that other galaxy eyes and he tries to use the effect of link reba which is just going to make my tachyon dragon stronger um now thanks to the afterglow doubling the attack of it already to 6k uh and i'm able just to put on a ton of damage here and just otk just like that getting the second attack from tachyon dragon um because he decided to use the link reba and if he didn't use the Link Karibo, he was dead either way, so it really didn't make too big of a difference there. But you can see just how powerful Tachyon with Afterglow Dragon is going into this new format. Um, now, I believe I have a match here of Photons versus uh, Marincess, uh playing against Larry. Showing off still how good Magician Souls is in this deck. Sending that Fog King there as a sort of Garnet target to be able to special summon out so it doesn't have to take up your normal summon. Tries to resolve that blue tang, gets lucky and finds a copy of wave off the top of the deck. Goes into Sea Angel to grab the field spell, goes into an enemy, and then uses that early field spell effect to be able to tribute them off to draw into some more cards, more extenders, more traps, etc, etc. Marbled Rock recycling some cards here in the end phase and actually has to discard because he has so much card advantage thanks to this Magician's Souls. Um, double trade in, I believe, or actually single trade in, resolving here. And then using the Thrasher and that Clush Vanisher to be able to go out and extend even further. Now, I make a bit of a mistake here. I should have made Infinity first before I made the Blast Dragon because Blast Dragon would have offered great protection against Wave. Um, granted, he could have just waved the, you know, the Blast Dragon later, so I guess it doesn't make too big of a difference. But going to use Afterglow here to summon out while I, or while I have that Galaxy Eyes on board because you can summon it while you have a Galaxy Eyes monster. Um, and I make Cypher, and then I make Full Armor, and I make sure I detach the Afterglow to be able to blow up the Field Spell. Now, I'm going to use Infinity to negate that copy of Wave, so I can clear that Field Spell and get rid of the immunity that he has. But Afterglow, they're acting as an extender this time, not as a way to push for game. Because it's able to summon out a copy of Galaxy Eyes from my deck to complete another Rank 8 using that leftover Galaxy Knight, which is going to get me into Photon Lord. And using Cypher here to clear that copy of the uh the marbled rock now i should have put the blast dragon in attack if i could have foreseen an otk um because i i don't know i just also don't attack with the number 90 i believe maybe i did i don't know it, 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 i probably could have otk there is what i'm trying to get at um but he goes ahead and activates the field spell for turn after gamma sealing my infinity um because he has gamma seal of course right uh, and then I use, of course, the, uh, the, the Burst Dragon uh, to bring out Galaxy Eyes. And he goes ahead and runs over the number 90. And I decide to add a copy of Galaxy Trance as a follow-up for next turn. And he's going to do a lot of main phase 2 shenanigans now that that monster negate I had on the field is gone. And he's going to go all the way up into that Wonder Heart with the three equips. Starting the turn with the wave um, immediately, which is interesting. I don't know why he wouldn't have held the wave, but... It is what it is. So we're going to go into Tachyon Dragon this time, which is a great card to go up against this card. Even though it is unaffected by card effects, if he tries to protect it by battle, I can just keep attacking it at more uh, attack points. And then main phase two, uh, going into number 90, and then using the Trance to be able to go into the Hope Harbinger, and then using Pot of Desires to finish things off there to get more card advantage. He commits the normal summon to the Magician Souls this time, and I sort of see that as a sign of weakness. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Monster Negate from number 90 there, Fortunately, he does have the extender, 
by way of the seahorse, and he also has Mandarin. Um, but he is locked into waters at this point, so I'm not really fearing too much from the extra deck. I have a lot of big monsters that he's going to have a hard time getting over, especially with number 38. So he's not able to clear that Soul Flare. Crashes, unfortunately, into that 38. And uh, goes to play the Field Spell. I'm just going to slurp it up, say no to that. Goes into another Marbled Rock, just running out of resources at that point, And we're going to go for game next turn. So we take the game one. Um, and I've got another uh, replay here. Again, this is continuing... Uh, from that same match. I believe this is game two. And uh, I think I get to go first here. Um, this might be game one. The other one might be game one. I'm not entirely sure. They might also be two separate matches. But all I know is we did have some pretty grindy games uh, playing against this Marin Sass deck. This might be game three, actually. I don't think it was a Swift 2-0. Um, maybe I'll have a highlight linked in the, the description as well. But nonetheless, not the greatest um, turn here for me. Uh, Soul Flare, number 90, with the Galaxy Eyes in hand, and an Effect Valor. So, then I do have a lot of ways to shut things off here. Using the Valor on the Blue Slug, um, so he can't get a resource card back to be able to continue extending with. But he does have Mandarin. And I go to blow up the Sea Angel with the Soul Flare. He uses Thanos to protect, and I negate with a number 90. So I can clear two cards here and stop him from extending. He sets the wave, plays the field spell, and passes it back to me. Now, we draw the afterglow for turn, which is insane. Uh, gonna use Galaxy Knight here to try to revive the Galaxy Eyes, as it usually does. But we're gonna use afterglow here as an extender to be able to go into number 90, or uh, number 62, rather. And we're gonna boost its attack up here now, since we're using it in the battle phase. And it goes up to 14,000 attack, which is absolutely, like, insane. Um, the damage would be halved. But one way you can sort of play around that is instead of using Afterglow to summon, you can use Afterglow to attach to this, so it will do the full damage. Um, but it doesn't matter. We didn't need it to do full damage anyways at 14,000 attack. Uh, we have enough things to swing in with there for later. So that's going to do it for that replay. Uh, now next up, I want to show you guys this replay here. This is uh, me playing... Uh, Block Dragon BA against a rather interesting gadget deck. And you can see he does double Nibiru in his opening hand. Uh, and I believe I end up playing through the Nibiru here uh, fairly easy. Resolving Sekka's Light, going into the Rhino Warrior to get into Cherubini. Using that Libic to get out the Edge of Sabers from my hand, Seer for, or Graph for Seer. And he goes ahead and uses the Nibiru right then and there. And I go ahead and use the Sabers. Seer brings back the Cherubini. And then Deshudo helps to make the... Saryuja, and then I use the Nessie, the Nessie gets hit, I go for the Jackalope, Jackalope goes through this time, and I draw into Orbital Hydrolander, still not playing Orbital, Hy Orbital Hydrolander, but as you can see, it's nice here because it acts as a pretty good extender, still searching Fossil Dyna, drawing into the Glow Up Bulb here, using the Saryuja to special summon it, and then synchroing into a Nat Beast, and then bringing back the Glow Up Bulb, and then summoning out the Block Dragon again, going into a Curious this time around, Block Dragon banishing that giant Rex to be able to go into Avermax. So, still Avermax Nat Beast uh, after getting Nibiru, which is still pretty good. He ends up crashing his Nibiru token and ends the and scoops there because it pretty much turned off three really good spells in his hand. So, um, yeah, it was really funny that I was able to play through Nibiru. And this deck can play through Nibiru if you do not get Nibiru at the right time. Uh, and it really depends what that right time is based on how well or bad you opened. Uh, so here I'm playing against Dr. Phil, who's playing Dracos. Again, my absolutely most hated match. But this is Gallus for the win. You'll see why. So speaking of Gallus, we're going to get things started with Gallus. And he's going to go ahead and chain the Ignis to be able to add Disciples. But we're going to mill a Nessie. And Nessie's going to burn for 14. So we're starting off with a lot of burn damage. So we're going to go right into the Phoenix to try to start picking off some of the back row. Flips up the Erupt, but lucky I'm still able to flip up, or discard rather, that Mothman uh, to be able to draw and discard that Snack. He flips up, uh, you know, the, there can be only one here, which does not matter at all. And the Monarch's Erupt is actually helping me because it's allowing my Giant Rex to be able to attack directly if need be. Um, so he's going to get started with the Disciples, and he's going to go ahead and recycle some cards here and use Return to bring back the Ignis. Pops the Return with the Diagram, searches the Dynamite Knight, resolves the Desires, draws into a Soul Drain, and ends up setting his Dynamite Knight, which is really interesting. I start with a Snack. He hits the Mothman, and it draws me into a Gallus, and Gallus mills the, the Gizmek for game, which is absolutely hilarious. 
He's got all these floodgates, and my boy Gallus is out here stealing games. So that's going to do it for that replay. Uh, and that's going to do it for this episode of Top Replays and Highlights. Again, I don't think I mentioned that at the beginning of the video, but uh, don't forget, I'm going to be posting some uh, Twitch clips and some highlights and stuff like that down in the description. Uh, so check those out as well. And here I'll show off the deck list of the decks that were played, of least the decks that I have. This is my current Master Rule 5 Galaxy list. You can see we're playing the Union Carrier, uh, two copies of the Afterglow Dragon. Playing Felgran because Felgran can act as a nice extender with Afterglow, especially turn one. Um, playing the one Transmigration might bump it up to two and play that 41 uh, cards because technically you don't count this. This is just so you can play Master Rule 5 on YGO Pro. Um, my current DDD list, as you can see here, a bit different than the one that I showed you guys. Playing the End of the Void because I think it's just kind of necessary. Uh, playing Nicola and uh, the Rebel King Leonidas just for some additional names. Fusion Fodder, uh, whatever you want to call that. Uh, and then here is my current BA Earth list. As you can see, I'm not playing Hydrolander anymore. Playing Gizmak instead, a bit more versatile and can help you to easily make the Dengirsu. And you don't have to sort of rely on drawing a dead Hydrolander or milling a dead Hydrolander. You kind of get the best of both worlds there uh, with the Gizmak because it can clear cards on its own by banishing three from the extra deck and can help make uh, Dengirsu, which is really its most important function at the end of the day. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, leave a like if you did and uh, let me know uh, what replay was your favorite down in the comments below. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, we're going to kill Santa out. We'll see you guys in the next one.